What up everyone, it's your boy Jester James here, coming at you with another YouTube video. Today I'm going to be talking about the OSI model and the TCP IP model, both of which are conceptual frameworks used to describe the functions of networking systems. Basically, the OSI and TCP IP models are tools we can add to our NetAdmin tool belt to remind us important tips for things like troubleshooting. They break down what's going on at different levels of problems in computers going from the physical level and the hardware to the application level with software programs. If you watched my previous video videos in the Networking Basics series, you recognize some of what we cover today. For example, you'll recognize a lot of the protocols that I mention, and if not, I highly recommend checking out my previous videos, or you can find them on my website. Links in the description. <laughs> so think of the layers of these models as different lenses you can use to focus on things when troubleshooting. It allows you to zoom in and out of the hardware, technical, and software layers of computer networking. So let's get started by learning the OSI model. The first layer of the OSI model is the physical layer. The physical layer defines the electrical and physical specifications of the data connection for example, the layout of the pins of the connector, like the RJ45 Ethernet connector from a previous video. Or, for example, the frequency for wireless devices, like, say, the 2 or 5 gigahertz bands on routers, you'll find the 2.4 gigahertz band provides coverage at a longer range, but transmits data at slower speeds. The 5 gigahertz band provides less coverage, but transmit data at faster speeds. You see, it's bound to the physical layer because it is responsible for transmission and reception of unstructured raw data in a physical medium. So you, you don't even think of it as a message or a tweet or a text or anything in, in that form. It's purely we're looking at electrical still on that like 1 and 0 scale, but we're not even looking at it from 1 and 0. It's just unstructured raw electrical data in a physical medium. So at that rate, right, bit rate control is done at the physical layer. It is the layer, and the physical layer is the layer of lower level networking equipment. And as I said earlier, it's never concerned with protocols or high, other higher layer items. Because that leads us to layer two. Layer two of the OSI model is the data link layer. The data link layer takes a look at the node to node connectivity or link between two directly connected nodes. It handles packaging and unpacking the data in frames. Because you see, raw network data are network packets, right? And packets, network pa raw network packets are unpacked network data frames. You can see this more clearly in the MAC protocol to work with ARP, which is a layer 3 network protocol. And MAC and ARP work together to give these nodes or devices addresses to connect to one another. The data link layer, however, defines the protocol to establish and terminate a connection between two physically connected devices. The data link layer is generally divided into two sublayers: media access control and logical link control. Remember, that's MAC and, say, LLC. The LLC layer, logical link control layer, is responsible for identifying and encapsulating network layer protocols and controls error checking and frame synchronization. That way networks, network frames and packets don't get mixed up. The MAC layer is responsible for controlling how devices in a network gain access to a media and permission to transmit data, aka access the network. Think of the MAC protocol linking MAC addresses and IP addresses. The IP addresses handling of the MAC protocol then bridges us into the network layer using the ARP protocol to resolve MAC addresses with IP addresses. So remember that ARP, the Address Resolution Protocol, we remember it from previous videos, and the IP protocol is on layer 3 of the OSI model. That's the network layer. So now we're bridging the layer 2 and layer 3 from the data link layer now to the network layer. The network layer handles packet routing by a logical addressing and switching functions. A network is a medium to which many nodes can be connected. Every node has an address. A network is a medium to which many nodes can be connected. 
Every node has an address. When a node needs to transfer a message to other nodes, it can merely provide the content of the message and the address of the destination node. Then the network will find the way to deliver the message to the destination node, possibly routing through other nodes. If the message is too long, the network may split it into several segments at one node, sending them separately and reassembling the fragments at the other node. The IP, ICMP, OSPF, and ARP protocols all operate, operate on layer 3 of the OSI model. And at this layer, all of those different things occur from the network, the packets in the network being fragmented, etc. And at this point, we're bridging from network the layer 3 to layer 4. So now from the network layer, we're going to the transport layer. Remember, there's seven layers of the OSI model. Layer 4, the transport layer. So the transport layer provides the functions and means of transferring data sequences from a source to a destination via one or maybe even more networks while maintaining the same quality of service, QoS functions, and ensure the complete delivery of the data from one endpoint to another. The integrity of that data can be guaranteed via error correction and similar functions. It can also provide explicit flow control function. Though not strictly conforming to the OSI model, the TCP and user data grain protocols, TCP and UDP, are essential protocols in layer 4. Think of it at this point now, you have your data that's on the wire from the electrical signals now to network packets going from one computer to another computer. And the transport layer is what gets them from one, com one computer to another computer. And the transport layer builds on all the other layers before it. Which leads us to now that session in between the two computers that are communicating. And that's layer 5, the session layer. <clears throat> the session layer controls the dialogues or connections between computers. It establishes, manages, maintains, and ultimately terminates the connections between the local and remote application. Layer 5 software also handles authentication and authorization functions. It verifies the data is delivered as well. The session layer is commonly implemented explicitly in application environments that use remote procedure calls. So now that leads us up to layer 6, the presentation layer. The presentation layer checks the data to ensure it is compatible with the communications resources. It translates the data into the form that the application level and the lower levels can accept. Any needed data formatting or code conversion is handled at this layer, such as, say, coding a text file to, like, ASCII, the American Standard Code for Information Interexchange. It's, it functions for data compression and encryption as well. For example, video calls will be compressed during transmission so that it can be transmitted faster and the data will be recovered at the receiving side. For the data that has high security requirements, such as like text message containing your password, it will be at encrypted at layer 6 as well, the presentation layer. Which leads us to the application layer, which is layer 7. Now the application layer, the last layer of the OSI model, interacts directly with the software applications. It provides communication functions as required, and it is the closest form to, say, end users. So what we see as, for example, a GUI, a graphical user interface. So functions of the ap application layer typically include verifying the availability of communication partners and resources to support any data transfer. This layer also defines protocols for end applications, such as, say, DNS, FTP, HTTP, IMAP, all of the big protocols that a lot of us have rented, met, and talked about. A lot of the big protocols, stop scrolling. <clears throat> no, scroll up to the start of the protocols. I'm going to read them off. A lot of the, in this layer, all, all the protocols for our end applications are, are mentioned here. Like D DNS is here, domain names, so how we get our domain names. DNS works in this application layer. HTTP works at this layer. For uh, like emails, IMAP and POP, internet message access protocol, post office protocol, they work at this layer. FTP, file transfer protocol, works on, on layer 7 here at the application layer. Uh, SMTP is another one as well. Um, there's a lot of different protocols that work here at the last layer of the OSI model because of the fact that it bridges them all together from the layer from the 
the bottom to the top. So that's the OSI model. Now, if I talk about the OSI model, I can't not talk about the TCP IP model as well. Both models, as I had mentioned earlier, are very sim similar, <clears throat> but the TCP IP model basically truncates the OSI model down and it kind of slims it down between from the seven layers to about four layers of the TCP IP model is. You'll kind of see how they merge together as well. I'll put some images up like I've been doing to kind of visualize that as well. But first layer in the TCP IP model is the network access layer. So the network access layer or link layer is responsible for placing the TCP IP packets on the network medium and receiving TCP IP packets off the network medium. So the TCP IP model, again, really truncates the OSI model down into these smaller areas for you to have uh, another level of perspective for the OSI model through the TCP IP model that breaks it down from the application level of the OSI model in the TCP IP model to the host to host levels of the, OS the OSI model with TCP and UDP to the internet network models with IP and ARP to the network access layer where it's, it's network connections and it's more physical. It's the interface component. So <clears throat> the TCP IP packets off the network medium in the first layer of the TCP IP model is designed to be independent of the network access method, frame format, and medium. In other words, it is independent from any specific network technology. In this way, TCP IP can be used to connect different network types such as Ethernet, Token Ring, or other network types. All the different types of networks that I mentioned in my previous video. So with that, that leads us into the next layer of the TCP IP model, and that's the Internet layer. And the Internet layer is responsible for host addressing, packaging, and routing functions. The core protocols of the Internet protocol layer are IP, ARP, ICMP, and IGMP. So remember we mentioned these a lot in our previous videos but I'll go over them again a little bit. IP which is the internet protocol and like IP address. ARP which is address resolution protocol and they work together for IP addressing and, and the ARP links the IP address to the MAC address. ICMP which is internet control message protocol IGMP, which is the Internet Group Management Pro Protocol, and the IP is a routable protocol responsible for IP addressing, routing, and the fragmentation and reassembly of packets. The ARP is responsible for the discovering of the network access layer addresses, such as the hardware addresses associated with a given Internet ad address, and that's the MAC address there in relation to the internet address. <clears throat> the ICMP, which is for pinging, is responsible for, for providing diagnostic functions, right? So you ping to see if the host is online and it allows you to go and have error checking of how those packets are delivered. IGMP is responsible for the management of IP multicast groups and in this layer the IP adds headers to the packets, which is known as the IP address so now you have at this layer IPv4 and IPv6 in the network layer of the TCP IP model and as you'll notice as well we also have that in the OSI model however the TCP IP model kind of shows how the different layers in the OSI model can kind of bridge together and how they can be viewed in a much more unified fashion than how separated they are in the initial way that I presented them. So now in the TCP IP model, the next layer is the transport layer. The transport layer, also known as the host-to-host -host transport layer, is responsible for providing the application layer with session and datagram communication services. So notice some of these keywords from the models are kind of mixing together, for example, special session. So the core protocols of this layer are TCP and UDP. TCP provides a one-to-one -one connection oriented reliable communications service. TCP is like the TCP packet and UDP is like the UDP packet. It's responsible for sequencing and acknowledgement of packets sent and recovery of packets lost in transmission. UDP provides one-to-one to one-to-many -one -to -one -to connectionless unreliable communications. The U in UDP 
is literally for users, so it's user datagram protocol, but the joke is it's unreliable data protocol. Like UDP is not reliable, whereas TCP, because you have things like air connection and you have a three-way handshake in TCP, you have more security in that. It's, it's more reliable, reliability. <clears throat> so that leads us to the last layer, the, the TCP IP model, which is the application layer. Now the application layer of the TCP IP model provides applications the ability to access to services of the other layers. So now in the application layer, you have things like HTTP, FTP, DNS, and you know and now most of these protocols, right, they feed off of each other. So like HTTP and then you have like FTP, SMTP, and DNS. Like DNS is a perfect example because DNS, they link not only the MAC address and the IP address, but the DNS links that that domain name for a say a web server. So that computer IP address gets converted into a string, could be jameskaith.com, and that jameskaith.com identifier matches it with the IP address of where the website is I like hosted, and that's DNS because that's the do domain name system for it. And that's a pro app DNS is an application level protocol, but you see. Even though it's on the application layer, it's using all the other layers below it, including like the network layer and things along those lines. So again, don't think of these layers as things that are like segregated from one another or they're, they're differentiated because they're part of a model. So you have different perspectives for them so you can have the different lenses through the different layers. So notice how you have all these different protocols. So now when you go and look at computers, and you say, open your, your Google Chrome browser, you're going to see a protocol is working because you, when you type it in the website, it's HTTP, HTTPS. You're seeing the protocols in action. And you'll see, like, ports as well. And as you further your career in, in cybersecurity and computers and computer networking, you'll see these things, like, pop up off more and more and more. That's why we have our pro ports and protocols you see as we repeat them in the videos previously. Today we talked about the OSI model and the TCP IP model, both of which are conceptual frameworks used to describe the functions of networking systems. And with that, we're going to be continuing our networking basics series in the next video. And I hope you found this video on the TCP IP and OSI models valuable. If not, no worries. I can always remake this video with some updated uh, comments and updated uh, style and formats afterwards. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you find this video valuable, please leave a like or comment down below. Thank you very much. That's all for this video. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.